Hello and a warm welcome to federal special program, Capital Beat. BJP released its manifesto or rather the Sankalp Patra for 2024 general elections. It was titled as Modi's Guarantee for 2024. And the basic focus areas were what Prime Minister Modi said that he's going to focus on the social infrastructure, on the digital infrastructure and the physical infrastructure. Then he said that the focus also would be on the dignity of life, quality of life, and employment through investment. So these were the broad pointers. But apart from that, the major announcements which uh, came that India would become a global hub in various sectors like uh, green energy, pharma, electronics, automobiles, semiconductors, that free ration for next five years will be extended, expand the PM Avas Yojana, free electricity to poor households, three crore houses for the poor. Uh, every person above 70 years of age will be covered under the ambit of Aishman Bharat. There'll be more IITs, IIMs, and AIMS. Then uh, there'll be three crore rural Lakpati Didis. Now, these are various announcements. Then coming to the major ones which have grabbed the news headlines, that there's going to be one nation, one election. Then they will uh, bring in the CAA, NRC and the Uniform Civil Court. India will bid for 2036 Olympics. Then there'll be a one nation, one student ICAR. So all these things have been announced. And so basically, uh, and he's spoken about a vision till 2047. But uh, Congress has held a press conference in the morning and Congress said that they have basically not answered on the questions which they had promised to deliver in the last 10 years. So the, the nation hasn't got the answers and now they are showing a mirror for the year 2047. So is this manifesto shallow? That's the first question. Will it live up to its promises? What does it speak about the image of BJP and Prime Minister Narendra Modi? And will the people vote for BJP on the basis of this Modi's guarantee for 2024, which is obviously the manifesto and the Sankalp Path. Joining me now is Anand Sahai, senior journalist, editor, political commentator. So thank you so much for joining. We have Girish Joshi, who's uh, a senior journalist, uh, political commentator. So thank you so much. And he's been associated as managing editor of Archtak. Thank you, sir, uh, so much for joining. We have Satya Sahu, who has been the press advisor of former president uh, K.R. Shankar Narayanan. So thank you so much for joining. And uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> K.R. Narayanan, you were associated with K.R. Narayanan. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sahu. Thank you so much for joining. And I'd like to begin with uh, Mr. Anand Sahai today, the conversation on the Sankalp Patra, that this piece of manifesto, which was released by BJP, what does it really speak? Does it speak about the new age India's aspirations. What is Prime Minister Modi trying to tell the people through this manifesto? I wanted to say one thing about the introduction you gave to Mr. Sahu, apart from being a former official with the President of India, he's a prominent intellectual and a very, very prolific writer on political affairs. So that is uh, his, uh, you know, that is how we know him today. So that is why. No. So, so, kindness. no, no, that, 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 that aside, uh, what I would say, Deluji, is that, you know, uh, when the ruling party like the BJP uh, issues a manifesto, it, you know, uh, it should have a, a kind of sanctity, right? Now, this manifesto is coming uh, what how many days remain now three uh, three days uh, six five or six days remain to the 19th coming like that and it is not a collection of generalities it is a a, a 76 page document which suffers from an abundance of banality it is banal that's one thing that's my first observation then I'd like to say further that let's go back to 2014. I'm not even saying the BJP. I always qualify my remarks on such matters by saying Modi's BJP. 
the man from Gujarat who came first by showing to the people of Gujarat by dazzling them with this whole hologram of the Red Fort. The whole thing was like a Gujarati gentleman politician is about to conquer the Red Fort. So let's all strengthen his hand. Moraji Desai was from the same state, a very prominent actor in India's political stage. But anyway, he did that. He came. And what was the shining slogan at that time? The Gujarat model. That was one. Two, Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas. The only Vikas we saw in the last 10 years was the Vikas of very well mobilized paramilitary organizations across key parts of northern India, whose job was to, in some states where the BJP was in power, to collaborate with the police and to attack and bulldoze and kill, you know, this cow vigilante stuff and all that stuff. So there is a proliferation of them across the cities of northern India whether or not they make themselves manifest on a daily basis or not. But they will come good on the day when they are required. Don't ever forget that. And there are uniformed men of our security services, which means the police. That's what I mean right now. And, and God forbid it should not be anything beyond that. <clears throat> when it's called for. So, unhika vikas hua hai. There is no vikas the uh, of the economy you know there is enough data to suggest otherwise there is no vikas development of the poorest sections of the society farmers whose incomes were meant to have been doubled by the year 2022 which was which is now two years ago they are up in arms <clears throat> for a long time so there's been you know, nothing of that kind and there is no reference, there is no accounting, there is nothing, there is not even a, a, a bare-faced way of saying, sorry, we tried, we couldn't do it, but we will do our best now. There's none of that. Now we are turning the chapter to 2047, 2047, under this rubric of Amrit Kal, etc., etc. How public platforms of any nature uncritically accept this load of rubbish. I'm sorry, I'm using strong language. But I think that's exactly what it is. A week before the election, let us not minimize what's going on. One nation something, one nation something. India is one nation. Of course, we operated as one whole universe of a certain kind because we gained independence in 1947 on that very basis. People came together. But that does not mean that the Andhra, the, the, the Kannadiga, the Gujarati, the Malayali, the Punjabi, the Bihari, they're all exactly identical people because they're linguistic differences. There are other differences. They're linguistic nationalities, full-fledged people. And there is enough scholarly work on these matters for anyone to try and push any discussion on, along those lines. So the one nation, etc., is all bunkum, you know? Nobody ever disputed that India was an indivisible and undivided socio-cultural political entity after 1947. We worked, our leaders of the past, they may have had a thousand failings, but they worked in the direction of national integration with the idea of connecting unity, producing unity out of diversities. And not to have a steam rolling mass of seven, eight, nine North Indian uh, states, one great language, you know, with a certain imaginary history, not even imagined, imaginary history, you know, pulverizing everybody. You talk about all this in South India. I frequently go to South India. 
what you hear is amazing from those people. There is so much resentment. There is so much resentment. I cannot tell you. It's not only a matter of winning or losing votes and elections in those states. It is going beyond that. That's one aspect of it. Two, I'm completely persuaded that if the Modi BJP, if the Modi BJP is able to return, and in my view, it, it, is, it, will, it will be fully able to return with the help of this magical device called the electronic voting machine. Otherwise, any amount of analysis and ground reporting will tell you otherwise. I'll take a brief second to just distract from the subject and say that I am ready to give them 100% of all the seats in six or seven states. Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Assam, and half the seats in Karnataka and Maharashtra. It falls well below 200. After getting 100% seats in all these places, I'm not even saying that so and so in UP, this opposition leader here or there is a useless fellow. Let's not count any of that. Let's give every single seat to Modi BJP and to Modi Amit Shah BJP. And then this is the result you will get. So the only way is this magical device I refer to, the EVM device. Under, a, under a, an, an electoral body called the electoral supervisory body, which is a handmaiden of the government, of the executive. It, the law has been changed to produce a bunch of nominated bureaucrats, retired bureaucrats, to fill those positions. They have no independence. They have no autonomy. They are, they are not, in my mind, constitutional, uh, uh, you know, an institution of that of that nature. They are not a statutory body. They're meant to be a constitutional body. So, uh, if, Anand, are you saying that this piece no, no, of please, please, is, please, is it a I, I'll just from... take half a minute more. If yeah. through, yeah. sorry, if through the you if through the use of such a device, and after I've showed you what the results are after giving hundred percent seats in so many states. If the results will naturally be in a certain direction, and if the return to power of the third term comes, it will not be one nation, one election. It will not be any of this, you know, the things that you read out just now, you know, Ramayan shows all around the world. It will be none of all the stuff. All that stuff we carry on on a sideshow. But the main thing will be there will be a counter revolution planned from day one against the constitution of India that came at the end of 66 decades of, of, of non-violent struggle under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. Any of us who have any credence in, the, in what Gandhiji's life and work uh, was all about, it will be a counter-revolution against that. That is what the planning will be. And it will be with the aid and abetment of ultra big capital, big money, you know, and anything it does will be to the detriment of, of ordinary Indians, not just the poor people, to ordinary Indians. It will be to the detriment of those who do not belong to a certain religious faith and who do not speak one particular language or its der closest derivatives. Right. Sorry, I'll stop here. All right. So, uh, I mean, uh, Anand, in a way, has given a complete picture of what the real uh, situation is, what BJP has promised. Now, I'll come to you, Mr. Sahu. Uh, so would you say that this manifesto carries some weight for an Indian citizen? Or do you, would you say that is it, it's, it's a shallow piece of paper? Uh, when you compare it with the manifestos of Congress, RJD, Samajwadi Party, the kind of things which they have spoken about, they promised like Congress, say, for example, it's not, there's no, I mean, we hardly have time to go into the manifestos of the other parties. But say, for example, 30 lakh uh, uh, jobs, you know, in the sanction posts, all of that Congress has uh, promised. So in comparison to the manifesto of the opposition parties, how would you rate BJP's manifesto? Uh, thank you, uh, Niruji, uh, for giving me this opportunity to participate. You know, I would uh, use the phraseology used by Gandhi, you know, for the Crips Mission report, you know, in 1942. 
He said, uh, you know, this Congress manifesto is like a post-dated check on a crossing bank. You know, see, if, you know, uh, you know, this is this phrase uh, Mahatma Gandhi used in the context of Crips Mission Report. You know, in 1942, they sought India's, you know, participation in uh, Second World War. And then uh, they said they would uh, do something for India after the war was over. So, you know, this manifesto is like a post-dated check on a crossing bank. I mean, how can you believe that they will create jobs when right from 2014 onwards, you know, how many jobs have been created? They promised, Modi, Mr. Modi promised two crores jobs per year or one crore, whatever crores jobs. And uh, during, uh, you know, then, you know, he said, uh, you know, even uh, making pokoda is a form, you know, is a, is a kind of a job, you know. So, so then, you know, these kind of uh, statements from uh, his first tenure and uh, and the kind the kind of manifesto they have now, uh, you know, placed it before the nation, the, it doesn't inspire confidence at all. Okay, and then proposals like a, a one nation, one election, you know, it is absolutely against the constitutional vision of India. Nowhere in the Constituent Assembly, when the election issue was discussed, you know, nowhere, nobody, no party, no member, including Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, whose birth anniversary today you are celebrating, nobody talked that there should be separate election, a one election, one nation. So what they are talking is not in tune with the, you know, legislative intent of the Constituent Assembly. I remember one member, he said, we require a multiple election commission, a election commission with multiple members, because there is bound to be some election or other going to be held across, in some parts of India or other. You know, it was stated in the Constituent Assembly in 1949 when the issue of election commission was discussed. He said maybe for a few years, there would be one, a, one election for the whole nation, but several political parties would emerge and one government might fall, another government might be formed. You know, so, so and so forth. Therefore, a permanent election commission with full mem you know, multiple members should be there to organize elections. So what is this manifesto talking about? You know, see, there is a there is a norm that legislative intent of the Constituent Assembly should be the guiding force for preparing any law. Okay, so for that, you know, they have to amend the Constitution for that, and it is it is not at all desirable. See, British British government had you know a fixed term Parliament Act. They didn't find it uh, at all uh, you know feasible, and eventually that act was uh, repealed. So already the you know in British you know so in I mean Britain such a thing has failed. Fixed term parliament they want to so so right. therefore this this manifesto I tell you you know doesn't at all inspire confidence as much as the manifestos of Congress which I find is highly you know historic. It actually fires imagination of people. It talks about employment. It talks about apprenticeship. It talks about you know, affirmative action in the private sector and so and so forth, caste census, and many other, uh, you know, diversity commission. And, uh, you know, it talks about media, you know, the freedom of media. You know, actually, the manifest of any political party must, in fact, address the problems faced by different sections of society and problems faced by democracy. Right, okay. absolutely. So, so now, uh, Mr. Sao, welcome back to you for the second round of questions. But this leads me to the next question, Girish, and which I'll come to you. That what, why do you think that BJP has not answered the pressing problems? Didn't they know that this is going to be their third term? They're seeking a second, uh, third term. Two terms have gone by. Whatever they promised that has not been fulfilled. Did they not have any compunctions within their heart that, you know, people will ask, where are the jobs? How have you benefited us? It hasn't addressed any of the sections of the society. So do you think that there is a lack of imagination within the party 
there is some problem on the part of the advisors of BJP and Prime Minister Narendra Modi because this doesn't look like an actual BJP manifesto. It sounds hollow. It 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 seems light when you compare it with with the uh, with the uh, the manifesto of the opposition parties. What do you think has gone wrong with BJP? Normally they say it's old wine in new bottle. This time we have old wine in old bottle. Hmm. The problem is they have failed to address any of the things which they now really understand that what is the problem in the country. See, there was they initially when they they, they came in they said that provident fund they are, said they are going to pay twelve thousand rupees. And the membership announcement went so high that 1.8 crores, and they started telling everybody that, see, the employment generation has gone up. So how they fooled the people. But the very next year, that 12,000 advantage was over, 1.4 crore had already quit the scheme. But their purpose was solved. So they are really a magician who can play with the figures, and they can convince the people. But of the late, you know, these things are now coming out because of the social media and people realizing. What is the generation employment? How are you going to generate? Even today, when you readily agree that agriculture is the biggest sector which gives the employment, so you are not behind them. They are, you are not encouraging them. On the contrary, you are saying that they should be killed. So I don't know what are the ideas. They don't. They are directionless now totally. And now what you think is they are talking about the same thing again and again. Now, if you see very funny thing inside is you know they have still they are holding their agendas. 700 Eklavya schools will be coming up. You know what are the agendas of Eklavya school? They still want to hold that. Then they are telling that Sant Tiruvelur cultural center will be done in Tamil Nadu. So they are still sticking to that, that Dharam, you know, anything with connected with religion will really earn them the votes. So that old school idea, idea of school, you know, they are not able to spare with it. They don't have any new ideas. Now, if you compare with Congress, I was just like going through, here they are talking of electric electric free, which is already there in many states. They are doing it. So you're not bringing something new. And you are the people telling that these three Bs are not going to work. They will fail the economy, including the finance minister had said that. There they said that we will increase the reservation quota as per the uh, least we will see that they get the employment. Here they say housing for three crore people. They say jobs for 50% 50, 50 will be given the reserved people will be giving the job and they are going to generate 30 lakh jobs. Now again, one nation, one which they know they failed. They are again coming back on that. One nation, one election, which is not feasible that they know. So I think they don't have the idea. It is an overnight thinking that they have done. They are again coming that they will be linking all the major cities with bullet train. Your single project for last nine years has still not got through and I don't know whether it will get through. It's not visible. But even then, they stick to their agenda. Because all the people, yes, uh, bureaucrats below him are, you know, they just feel happy that they should put something where Modi sahab should say, oh, beautiful. So this is, I think, not the uh, Sankal Patra. He, they are trying to increase the tourism. Now, tourism has already been the subject and people are doing, every state will like to have the tourism sector. Not doing anything there. Digital Samvad Center, they want to say. What is the digital Samvad Center? People are already there. On the contrary, you are killing the rural economy, which has always been the basic of the Indian economy. What Manmohan Singh had done is, Manrega was based on that, that if you don't have work, you can go back and earn. And you are holding it because you know this is a successful scheme. But that they can't admit because of that arrogance. Jan, uh, Jan Jagruti, Gaurav, I don't know what all things they are coming out. Uh, now, the main thing which I tell is they are again coming with that mudra loan scheme. I collected some details. Mudra school scheme, you know, uh, were 4.25 lakh crores. Last startups when they decided. That totally amounted to 46,702 rupees to the each beneficiary, as many had applied. You can't do any startup with that 45,000 rupees. And then there was a CBI inquiry rate on the bank and ultimately CBI established that 95% of the beneficiaries were the BJP people, not the local people. So when these things, they know it has failed. It is in the public domain. But now this is uh, dependent on the opposition. They should come out with all these facts and say that these schemes are wrong. They are not going to 2004, 247, nothing is going to come out. So they will stop fooling and now decide whom are they going to vote for. Nilo. Absolutely. 
but uh, uh, one point which uh, which which I mixed, missed earlier, and Anand, I'll come to you. That uh, one look at this whole uh, manifesto. Uh, people have started saying that you know, if uh, Modi returns to power for the third time, what happens to the agenda of Hindutva? What happens to the aspirations of the RSS? Now, given the fact what uh, Girish just pointed out, Eklavya schools, Piruvala cultural centers. Uh, Ramayan uh, circuits they are talking about, they'll take Ramayan globally. So what happens, I mean, what is the kind of glimpse we get and how does a citizen really understand as far as the Hindutva agenda of the BJP is concerned? Will it become more stringent? Will it become more aggressive? How, how, how does uh, a citizen of India at this point of time really get prepared for this kind of an agenda? I may not be quoting very accurately, but the rough idea is what Burton Russell had once said that <clears throat> I'm not saying this is fascism, it is not there yet, but it has very strong, showing very strong uh, uh, thrust in that direction. It could be authoritarianism, it could be neither of these, it could be something akin to these. You know, those are very finer uh, uh, points of political theory I'm not going to get into now. The, Russell had said about fascism, which he saw in Europe, that it is established by mesmerizing the fools and then confusing the intellectuals, you know. So everything that you're talking about, I think um, Joshi Ji said something very interesting, which is also, which is relevance to our, our, our discussion. That you do none of this vikas, vikas, vikas. You do none of those things. But you do Thiruvalluvar schools, you do some, you know, these are all ways of penetrating your mind, filling your mind with, with a certain variety of propaganda, which will not stand scrutiny in any serious discussion seminar <clears throat> among people who know about that subject. And you, you color people's views, perceptions over a period of several decades. A girl or boy starts at the age of six, seven, eight, and by the time she or he finishes school, college, and then enters into your teaching profession, becomes a lecturer, becomes a lawyer, becomes a magistrate, one day will right. become Chief Justice of India, one day become Chief of the Indian Army, or the DGP of a certain state, or a college principal or vice chancellor, then you see the maza. We are already seeing some of that. So that is the, you know, the inner penetration. That is the whole point is not Vikas, etc. These are shibboleths to mouth, you know. They do, what's Vikas? I mean, we can have a discussion about what Vikas is. Vikas is not enriching a handful of very, very ultra rich people. That's what's happening. There is a man whose son's pre-wedding, an entire port in a major state of India, had an airport which had been converted into an international airport for a period of two or three or four days. Now that is the level of development which has taken place in India. Of course you have infrastructure. The roads are not being built for the first time in India. The roads have been smartened up, that is true. Certain roads have smartened up. But is that, is, is that all you can show? The Americans occupied Afghanistan for a certain number of years. I happen to be living in Kabul for a certain amount of time as a professional journalist. So they also made roads for the movement of their troops and so on. Perfect roads. The Russians made schools when they when they invaded and they came. Everybody, these days, the British, you think they left India as a rubble? They didn't. You know. So what's all this big crying uh, yourself horse about? I have done this, I have done this, I have done this, and before me there was nothing. Hmm. Now, how many very important examples Joshi Ji gave us about the pension scheme, about this scheme? You know, they are not functional things. They are just things to say. Absolutely. Say in public meetings by you know a certain level of people for election purposes. But the wider things are being done somewhere else away from the scene. I was very struck when Prime Minister Ji came today to his own party office. He was 
garlanded heavily as though he was arriving at a <laughs> in an aircraft in a foreign land you know the protocol ministers were in line you know i used to cover the foreign office for a number of years for several leading newspapers here and i used to see we to see who has come who hasn't come protocol you know balki khal nikalna hamara kaam tha hum karte the ye sab bina matlab ke kaam ye hazir the ya nahi the उपस्थित थे या नहीं सॉरी हाजिर इज द रॉन्ग वर्ड उपस्थित थे या नहीं ये महाशय तो ये सब मामला चलता था तो वही आज सब मैं देख रहा था कौन कौन से अनुपस्थित हैं हुआ द पो फेलोज हुआ नॉट देर हु एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी देर बट वर नॉट देर उनकी तो शामत आने वाली अब ये तो यू नो दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ थिंग ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल दस वॉट आई एम ड्राइविंग एट यू हैव ग्लोरिफाइड एन इंडिविजुअल टू सच ए डिग्री you pump so much hot air into him he is bound to fly like a balloon that's exactly what's going on he's already flying around like a balloon you know in the hands of an able creative literary writer this can make for a, for a fantastic novella you know or even a short story but you know the thing is this we in the media have left aside the whole notion of criticality of critical evaluation of something we literally report 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 as we see today ye hua wo unhone ye kaha unhone ye kaha agar kuch sachmuch mein sahi karna hai to wo tathakathit lag jata hai fir uske baad theek hai aur char chhe isse bulwane ke baad us dusra bachcha jo जिसके चू बोलने पर चाबुक चलता है वो आधा बोलना शुरू करता है उसको दबाओ ये तो हो रहा है हमारे मीडिया में यू नो दैट्स व्हाई आई डोंट एग्री एनी मोर विद एक्सप्रेशन गोदी मीडिया गोदी मीडिया पोर्टल मीडिया लैपटॉप लैप नॉट लैपटॉप मीडिया बट लैप मीडिया ओके बच्चा है जो बड़ा प्यारा बच्चा गोद में खेल रहा है तो अगर एकाक होती तो गोदी मीडिया चलता अगर पूरे मीडिया भारत के पूरे मीडिया यूनिवर्स में had they been just one or two favored ones favored child you know oh i you know in in pakistan there is a big joke going on at one time 40 years ago there are trust papers they they operated with the basis of trust you know like tribune trust trust papers and trusted papers so which category were you so there were a few trusted papers in pakistan who could be relied upon to push the line of the military in india there is no one or two trusted papers and therefore there cannot be godi media the entire institution of media barring people like yourselves you know jo aap small channels karte hain koshish karte hain bharpur that you be as critical and so on about everybody you know etc as to bring some so called truths you know don't let don't let facts hide the truth you know there is an old saying you know <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> the very famous uh, british guardian journalist who was to be posted in new delhi you know he said in response to a question once i don't let facts come in the way of the truth you know wo sab to baat bhul gaya ab to whole sales you know they have the media unfortunately has been overpowered now when the media has been overpowered to such a degree and in slow stages even you will be overpowered will be laws made to end the youtube two fellows have been taken to jail or something na or their channel has been shut channels have been blocked yes yeah 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 but have been blocked for what what was the crime i don't know were they committing gang rapes or what were they doing i really would like to know you know so I, I, honestly or were they mounting decoity bids i really can't say so but they have been shut so i mean you better start counting your you know chips very soon anything can happen and uh, so uh, we don't know and therefore it's no longer a question of godi media media wholesale election commission wholesale indian judiciary nearly wholesale barring a few odd judgments here and there you know and then what's left then i mean i, I you know i don't want to specify where you say but people can see all this has completely been overpowered otherwise how will something like the electronic voting voting machine magic how can it perpetuate itself in this fashion 
So it's all been complete collapse. And therefore, I would I would submit very humbly, there is there is not too much relevance to the people, or for the sake of their political health, in analyzing certain items. One, two, which look like to be important. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six items. Right. Uh, getting into deeper analysis of that problem. Don't do that. Get into the deeper analysis of, you know, Achhe uh, Din. Uh, Absolutely. Get into the deeper analysis of those fundamental issues. Housing for the poor. You know, things of that sort. Price rise. Employment fall. You know, analyze those issues. Then you will come to realize what's going on. And then you will realize the compulsion behind creating a facade of like this which is which is unfortunately still being referred to as the election manifesto right in hindi ghoshna patra ye kaisi vidambana hai ye aap ye isko dekh what a what an irony for a democracy the most powering democracy in the world actually i'm not saying third world in the world what where are we headed that is the question to my mind exactly so that's it's really unfortunate and you've listed it out very very well uh, uh mr sahu now what i want to ask you is that do you see uh bjp completely disconnected from what's happening on the ground now look at the uh, the lokniti csds survey yes. what it said it said that you know uh, still uh, jobs unemployment price rise remain the biggest issues for the people but even then people are inclined to vote for bjp that's what the third report uh, of this uh, survey says but my point is that if you look at the manifesto of bjp does it give you a picture that they are really not connected with the ground or as what uh, anand just said that they are trying to build up a facade or some kind of a hot air balloon no yeah, yeah actually i fully agree with uh... Uh, Anand Sahaji, when he said that actually this will uh, promote or uh, trigger what is called, a, he, he very nicely put it, counter-revolution. Okay, so counter-revolution is normally triggered by those people who are not tuned to the ground. See, for instance, you quoted very rightly, in fact, I was about to say that CSDS survey very clearly outlined the priorities of the people. Their priorities are set by them in terms of you know high levels of unemployment price rights okay and all those basic uh, social economic issues but this manifesto just doesn't address them rather this manifesto in fact uh, just doesn't inspire confidence among people that unemployment issue would be addressed instead they talk about a caa and NR, nrc and caa and nrc is nothing but uh, Frankly speaking, a step towards that counter-revolution, which Mr. Anand, uh, Sahaji put it. So, you know, see, for instance, uh, you know, election commission ke mein, you know, uh, you know, today I wrote an article, CSDS, uh, you know, this Loknit survey said that, you know, some 58% of the people they have lost their faith on the election commission of India, you know, which is a very serious matter. You know, see, there was time I went, when I was working, uh, you know, in Rashtrapati Bhavan uh, during the tenure of uh, uh, President Narayan, and he inaugurated the Golden Jubilee of this, uh, you know, election commission, and he quoted a poll survey. Po poll survey. He said that the election commission commanded the respect of people, and that uh, poll indicated that the faith of people in election commission was much more than the faith they had on judiciary. So the decline of the faith of people on election commission is a worrying, you know, excess, you know, worrying uh, issue. So See, I think this this manifesto suddenly, you know, uh, as somebody put it very nicely, you know, he said PC Sarkar ka jo magic hota hai, you know, PC <laughs> Sarkar ka magic mein bahut itra acha chiz dikhate hai, the you know, they, they, he casts a spell on people, aur wo apna haath ka safai you know, cover करने के लिए वो काफी music बजा बजाते हैं कुछ लड़कियाँ के dance करते हैं कुछ लड़का के dance करते हैं so you know actually frankly speaking it creates an illusion 
and illusion quite often impresses people. So therefore, they still vote for the BJP. I find right. this a grandeur of illusion. It was almost like an illusion, which has been created Absolutely. by... Yeah, a grandeur of illusion, grandeur of illusion. But to my mind, this time, people have gone seen through the game. So therefore, right. they will exercise their discretion, you know, to exercise their vote. Right. All right. All right. Now, I'll come for the concluding remarks uh, to you, Girish. What would you really say at the end of this uh, entire discussion? Nilu, both are very senior and very experienced fellows. So what they were said is absolutely right. So covering up, I can only say when Neil Armstrong landed from Moon Missions, first thing he was asked that, what were you afraid of? He told, we tried very hard not to be overconfident. Because if we be that, something will pop up and bite us. Now, this is the state of BJP. They were so overconfident because whatever they planned was foolproof. But I don't know, something went wrong with... Chief Justice Chandrachur, salute to him. Because electoral bond was foolproof. So they knew we a lot of money. They wanted to seize the accounts of the opposition. Even by, by UP election, their experiment successful for, by, after doing that uh, note bandi. So they, their systems were foolproof. But somewhere something came up and by it. And now they are not able to counter this. If you see, even now the body language of PM where he goes, his confidence level has come very down. Because now he knows what is going to be the outcome. Now they don't have more. Whereas Basuzab really said, okay, we used to give, travel 20 kilometers to see Sarkar's magic. You know, we were astonished. Ah, what now every YouTuber is telling him okay, so that Sarkar's magic is gone. Now every Tom Dick and Harry knows how it is being happening. So Jadu Modi ji ka bhi every public knows, so now it won't earn him too much of votes. Let us see what happens now on the fourth of June. Absolutely. Hello. So we'll have to leave it to the people now and we will see whether they use their discretion. And as what was discussed during the course of this program, that it looks like a grandeur of illusion which has been created. It's almost like a facade. Modi probably doesn't have too much or rather he doesn't have a new story to tell the people. We'll have to wait and see how the campaign builds up, how, and more importantly, how the opposition reaches out to the people despite the manifestos and the promising manifestos which they have come out. We'll have to wait and watch what happens in the coming days. Our first phase of election begins on 19th April. It's a seven-phase election up to 1st June. So lots will be happening in the coming days. Thank you so much, um, Anand Sahai. Thank you so much for joining, Mrs. Sahu. Uh, Girish, it was wonderful having all of you on the program. And one appeal to the viewers who are watching this discussion, subscribe to our channel, send us your feedback, and stay tuned to the Federal. Thank you. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.